Thank you so much, everyone, for, for being here live and for um, catching up with this on the replay. I really appreciate you showing interest in this. I genuinely feel a need um, to teach people about some of the things that we will go through tonight because I'm feeling um, and I'm connecting with the deep heaviness um, all around us. And the thing is, is that unless you delete you know, social media and you disconnect literally from the world, we're hit with various, you know, components of external trauma and things that are affecting us at a collective level. And in some way, shape or form, we are all impacted by this, even though we are miles apart, we are definitely, um, I guess, afflicted and for anyone here, I'm just going to make that educated assumption that you're an empath and that you're a highly sensitive person. And just by nature, when we see others suffering and we see others in affliction, we can't help but also take on some of that trauma. And so I'm setting the intention tonight that whether you're here with us live or watching the replay, that you are able to, to walk away uh, learning a few tools, first and foremost, Secondly, deepening that connection with yourself and then obviously um, learning how to, I guess, de-stress your nervous system because there are so many, I'm, I'm noticing all around me, so many things are triggering us and they're little things that obviously they're accumulating and it's just an obvious indication that our nervous systems are in constant state of flight or fight and that's because we are not designed to be receiving such you know trauma and bad news constantly and the way our modern world is constructed nowadays it's just this is now how it is and it shouldn't be this way and so the way our bodies were constructed this is unnatural for us now whilst you're going to receive the healing benefits of tonight's class twofold is we're going to set the intention and I'm going to teach you some strategies that you can use in bed, you can use sitting on the couch, you can use when you're sitting in traffic, like there, there are no you know, hard and fast rules that we can use on an ongoing basis to help send healing energy to those afflicted personally in the war. Now, I don't know about you, and I'll get into that in a moment, but um, the constant, um, like we're living in a, in a world of duality. And whilst one part of us wants to ignore, you know, other people's problems and, and what's happening in the world. The other part of us is obviously very curious and constantly needing to know what's going on. There's a bit of curiosity, part of our human nature, but also this, we've come to this realization and COVAS taught us a lot of things in this regard is that governments aren't going to do shit, right? If they, if the government was going to do anything, they would have done it already. And so this needs to happen from the bottom up, okay? So I'm here to flip that model that we're used to because relying on the government, relying on other people to come and save you, that's gone. That's not going to happen. And so it's really important that in all facets, facets of life, whether it be, you know, the different areas of life that can impact you. So your personal life, your relationships, your business life, your finances, um, your work life, professional life, there is so many instances where we can be play the victim and 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 wait for someone else to come and save us. That's not going to happen. And you need to become your own savior. And if you've ever worked with me, you'll know that I don't ever feed your victim. I'm not going to you know give you a pity party and say, you know, oh gosh, that you know you, you've been through so much, you poor thing. And and I guess as women, everyone who's registered here, you, you're you're women. Um, as women, we're naturally inclined to, you know, have have a goss session, have, have that bitch session. But unfortunately, it's it's not serving you because it's constantly feeding and reinforcing what's happening, and then you're just creating more of that. So, without it, you know, waiting anymore, I'm going to get into tonight's class. So the first thing I'm going to start with is that your mind does not know the difference between real and imagined, okay? This has been proven by science. This has been proven in many different circumstances, um, in different scenarios. And to, to the extent of right now, 
I want you to imagine you're holding a lemon. Let's just do this exercise together. You don't need to get up. You don't need to go to your kitchen. You don't even need to need to leave your house. Just imagine you're holding a lemon, a big juicy lemon. I want you to squeeze it so some of the juice gets squeezed out. Okay. Imagine you've got an imaginary knife. You cut the lemon in your hand and you don't even cut yourself. You just cut the lemon in half. You now have half a lemon in your hand. I just want you to put this lemon under your nose. What do you notice happening in your mouth? I feel like I need some salt. Naturally, what should happen is your mouth saliva glands start to salivate because your, your mind is sending a signal to the saliva glands that you're about to eat a lemon and that you need to you need some saliva in order to process and digest and swat, in order to swallow the lemon, okay? You did not have a real lemon in your hand, but this exercise is here to show you that when you are watching something, when you are viewing something, when you are having a discussion, your brain, your mind actually perceives that as happening to you right now, okay? It does not know that, you know, if you're talking about a story, a tragic story that happened to someone else, your body thinks it's happening to you. Now, this is a bit concerning because we're, you know, uh, living in a society now where we have everything literally in our mobiles. We have 27 apps on the TV and we have access to, to YouTube. And I think I read a stat and this stat was from last year, something like we would need something like 50 million years to go through every single YouTube video. And that was last year. I'm sure there's been 50 more million videos created since last year, right? Where I'm, What I'm getting at with this is we are totally consuming. We're in a society where consuming, consuming, consuming. Now, consuming can mean the food you're eating, but it's more important to notice about the words, the data, the content, the videos, the 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 um, the, the teachers and the mentors that you learn from, and how they are, you know, impacting you and influencing you in some way, shape, or form. And so. I start with this because what is happening now in the world is obviously very concerning because through default and through, I guess, our past experience, um, I guess, specifically through COVID and then as a, I guess, an extension of that, you could say the Ukraine um, and Russian war, we have been indirectly impacted by those events through inflation, okay? Okay. I'm not here to get into that there's bullshit reasons why petrol has gone up and why food prices have gone up. I'm not here to, you know, get into that. That that's another um that's another seminar in itself. But what I'm here to talk about is that we can't help but feel you know impacted by what's happening currently in Palestine because by default we're actually worried about the ramifications. Number one, we're obviously so, you know, our hearts break for, for the mothers who've lost their children, for the just the families, they've lost their, their homes, they've lost their lives. It's going to take years and years and years to build up what Palestine has, has had, um, specifically since 1948 when Israel became a nation state and they, they took over the land to begin with. But what I'm going to mention to you first and foremost is that often – you know, we're obviously um, receiving information, whether you sit down and watch the news or on social media, and we get ourselves into a state of either anxiousness or depression. And I'm going to say something really important to you. And one of my mentors taught this to me. And he basically said that you're anxious and depressed because you are only thinking of yourself. And this may seem a bit harsh and it may seem a bit, um, you know, counterintuitive, but if you think about it, when you get yourself into that cycle of, of repetitive thoughts and you, you're on this loop, this ongoing loop, and you, you find it difficult to break out of it, it's because you're replaying a story, you're replaying a pattern in your mind that you cannot break out of. And unfortunately, the way the laws of the universe work is the more energy, the more focus you put on those things, the more you create of it. And so the more, the moment that you use your energy to give to others, okay, you automatically, something happens, there's a shift. 
there's a there's a glitch in the system. There's a you know I'm sure we all remember DVD, you know CDs and DVDs. The minute they get a scratch, that's it. You can't play the song, can't play the movie. We want to create basically a scratch in your DVD. We want to create a scratch in your tape. And how you do that is by giving back. Okay. When you you cannot serve someone else and be depressed at the same time. You can't serve someone else and be anxious at the same time. I promise you this. So there are many ways, you know, within your own community, your, your own little network that you can find ways to really, I guess, give back. And sometimes it can just be, you know, having, you know, a, a chat with someone. Sometimes it can be, um, you know, help, helping someone else. You know, there are so many people in need. And I'm not talking about, you know, the, the exchange. It doesn't necessarily have to cost you anything. Sometimes just offering to cook someone a meal. To you, You've baked some cookies offer it to someone else or, you know, going for a walk with someone, you know, or volunteering. There are so many amazing causes that resonate with, with your passions, whether it be animal groups or, you know, the, the elderly. Finding a way to give back is going to scratch your DVD, okay? So I just want to start with that because we need to create glitches, We, you know, and, and your life is full of these glitches, because you create, you're constantly creating new patterns, but when you're in the thick of it, it can be hard. Now, I'm not here to take away from some of, you know, and, and diminish the experiences that you have had, because we all have trauma. We all have, you know, sad moments in life. And I'm going to get to that in a moment, but it's really important that you, you understand the difference between real and imagined, okay? Because your mind doesn't. And so what happens is your mind believes everything you tell it or show it, and then it tells your body. And so what happens is your body starts to perceive certain things to as though it's literally happening to you, even though it's not. And how this plays out is based on where is your focus. Now, I... Uh, it's, last year, especially as a, I'll give you an example, Every, anytime I clicked on certain people's stories on social media, it was some horrific, horrific, horrific videos coming out of the wall. Now, I uh, last year I had I, I lost an auntie, um, I lost a cousin in January. Um, my nephew got hit by a car in January as well. So I was already in a state of uh, like distress. My nervous system was already shot. To be constantly faced with that, I just found myself, I had to mute certain people and it got to the point where I actually deleted them, like unfollowed them because I'm like, I cannot constantly see this. And the thing is, is normally when you're watching TV or you're on YouTube, for instance, you choose what you watch. The thing with social media is that there's no warning <laughs> Um, people barely say, they put one post and say, oh, by the way, trigger warning, you know, next post has, has, has you know, dead bodies in it, right? And that's, I'm going to, I'm not going to, you know, dance around what it was. It was literally dead bodies. We need to be extremely mindful of where we're placing our focus. We all have, like I said, we all have affliction and, and you know, different scenarios happening to us in our lives. And so it's really important that you are honoring where you are putting your focus. You need to be in control of this, okay? If there are certain people that trigger you because they're constantly, you know, they're energy vampires or they're constantly talking about X, Y, Z, avoid them, okay? You do, you're you not a tree. You're not planted to the ground. Get up and move or simply stop being around those people, okay? You need to take back your power and it doesn't matter if these people are family colleagues, whoever it may be, you need to make a stance and you need to set those boundaries. On that note, you also need to honor the seasons of your life because we it's, you know, it's all fun and games to say, you know, I'm in a constant state of spring where everything is growing and, you know, business is flourishing and, and life is happy and I'm dancing around flowers all the time. That's not always the case. And you personally would have different seasons in your life. And then as a society, we also have a season. I'm going to give you a moment. Can you guess what season our society is in right now? We're in winter. Okay. We're in the winter. We're in the winter because unfortunately it's, we're in the thick of it. 
okay? And we'll be in winter for another few more years, okay? I'm not here to say that we're, we're you know, th there, there is light at the end of it, but the thing that I want to emphasize is no season lasts forever, okay? This is a really important point. You may be going through a dark time, a dark phase in your life right now. The only way out of it is through it. That's something that's so important to recognize. And I guess it, it it should hopefully release you from some of that burdens that you're carrying. You know, we all have afflictions, whether it be death, whether it be sickness, illness, um, financial problems, business problems, relationship problems. But when you honor the season that you're in, it, it should help you understand, okay, well, what's next? And then what happens when you are aware of the season that you're in? Guess what happens? you then can start preparing for the next season, okay? And so as a society, yes, we are in a state of winter, but we are going to come out of that. I'm going to say, like, as a side note to this, I'm, I'm not, this is not an astrology class, but the astrology does tell us uh, mid-May 2025, so in a year and a bit to 26, we're going to have this huge shift happen. Um, so I guess we're, we're nearly there, okay? I hope that that gives you a little bit of hope um, of, of what's to come. And so just want to, I guess, emphasize that. If you're in your current spring cycle or you're in your current summer and you're reaping your rewards and you, you're, you're seeing the fruits of your labor, then milk it and honor it. Do not let anyone, you know, make you feel guilty for not being in that, that element. It's so um, easy to get caught up in in cycles in our life where we we dim our own lights, right? But the thing is, you need to to be that light. How 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 can all the other candles get lit if no one has lit their own? Okay, we need to light our own in order to spread that that love um, for others. So I guess it's important um, to mention that. Now I'm going to get into the heart of the matter. Whether you like it or not we are experiencing at the moment vicarious trauma. And vicarious trauma is related to this trauma that is being built over time that causes our nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system, to go into a constant state of fight, flight, or freeze. And this is because we are experiencing symptoms of distress as if you had been there physically, okay? I'm not here to say if the mind believes the real versus imagined. It's not an if, okay? We have we have numerous scientific evidence proving that the mind does believe everything it sees. And so when you are constantly on your phone, social media being the best example here, and you're constantly seeing affliction, you know, through the wall, through the wall, that the, the you know, whether it be a, a, a caption or an image or a video, Either way, your mind goes into that state of shock, okay? You may not notice this because it's happening automatically. Your heartbeat starts to, to race. Your breathing starts to go more shallow, more shallow. You might start to sweat, okay? You, your bowel movements might have some changes. Your immune system gets lowered. All of these things are trigger points. Your blood pressure actually changes. And so viewing these constant disturbing images can affect you physically, emotionally and psychologically. Now, the answer, it may not necessarily be to switch off your phone because there's a part of us, like I said before, that we're, we're so curious and we want to be informed, but at the same time, where we need to be really, really careful of how our bodies are reacting to this. And so I'm just going to give you some um, some tips here. So some signs to watch out for, okay? You may not be, you know, aware of this and, and you know, reach out to me. I'd love to know if this has been the case for you. How, you know, how, how have you noticed that you have reacted? So fear, anger, hopelessness, you know, some of the, the examples there, disconnectedness, these are all very common. And then, you know, from a physical manifestation, you know, in your reality, you might lose your appetite and then you might want to shut off from the world. I know I've had days where I'm like, you know what? I can't be fucked for social media. So I literally, you know, stay away from it. And, and that in itself helps me. But at the same time, am I disconnecting from the wrong things? Okay. And that's something that I just want you to be mindful of. 
And so what can you do when you're experiencing vicarious trauma? So the first thing is, you know, to have that awareness. So to recognize the problem, right? And, and we're, you know, I'm here using the wall as our lens or theme that, that we're using this through. The next thing is to talk it over with someone you trust. And I just want to add that you can actually use these steps with, you know, specific examples in your life where you're afflicted and affected by, by you know, things, things that are causing you stress, whether it be illness in the family, a death that's happened, um, ongoing, you know, examples um you know everyone has has their own personal um story so i'm just pointing that out so sometimes talk therapy helps um sometimes you you may need to see a, a professional or to get you know energy work done um i personally talk therapy like when i say that i mean like a, a counselor or a psychologist i personally think that that actually makes it worse because when the body is retelling the story. When you're tell telling the story from an oral perspective, the mind thinks it's happening to it again, and you can put yourself back into that loop. And believe it or not, the army has, like the US Army in particular, and I know the Australian Army does the same thing, they found a new method where instead of um, getting the soldiers to do talk therapy when they've experienced you know, obviously they're, they're walking away from, from the war with PTSD. They have actually found that writing out their experiences does not trigger the same, um, you know, automatic response in the brain. And instead it activates this a different part of them that's more, more healing response. So journaling can be a, an avenue that you take instead of talk therapy. Looking after your sleep. Now, Sleep does not mean sitting in your room at 2 a.m. or laying in bed with your phone um, doom scrolling, okay? Really important. The last, you know, two, three hours of the night, you should have no lights on. Um, I know my husband and I, I am always like, okay, it's 8 p.m., turn off the lights, right? We can use um, our torches or if I turn on the diffuser, that becomes our nightlight. It's so important that you are um, dis disconnecting because melatonin starts to produce and activating blue light constantly does reduce the production of melatonin. So if you are having sleep problems, make this one little switch and just notice the difference. Taking time out and creating boundaries, that's obviously an important point because you know you you cannot be constantly exposed to this because of the way that the mind and the brain works. Now, Next one, grounding. You need to be connected to the earth, okay? I don't, you know, grounding is, you know, it gets, it's, it's a great hashtag to use, put it that way. But our bodies become so disconnected when we are constantly exposed to technologies, okay? You, a simple grounding exercise is focus for five seconds on five objects that you can see around you, right? You can do this right now. Focus on the contact your body makes with the chair on the floor. Just notice, how do your pants feel on, on your legs? How does the chair feel? Um, you know, are your feet on the floor? How, are you wearing socks? Are you wearing slippers? Are you wearing shoes? Smell a food or a flower or some other item. I do this all the time with my bunnies, especially when I give them herbs. There's something about the back of their necks. They just smell like flowers. So I sit there sniffing them and it is the most therapy. No drug in the world, no man-made drug could ever replace that. And then splashing water on your face. Um, that's, again, that like puts you in that that wake-up mode and it's, it's really therapeutic. Another thing is to warn others, you know, before you share it. Like I said before, often people are just sharing videos and there's a caption like, oh my gosh, this is so sad or, you know, how tragic. And it's it's really sad. So if you know certain people that are constantly triggering you because you're viewing their stories, you need to switch off. Simply just mute their stories and that's okay. Breath. We're going to do some breath work today because your breath is the elixir to life. We, you know, and I'm going to get into this a lot more detail, but I probably can guarantee you you're not breathing properly. And then number eight is probably the most important one. 
remember that you are not powerless. You are not powerless. You're never alone. And we all need to look out for each other. And so that's my, like, my hope with tonight, like to create this sense of community amongst us where we can recognize, you know, our afflictions in each other and, and to be there for each other. And at the same time, twofold, to send love and energy and, and healing to those personally um, aff affected and afflicted by the war. So energy healing. Now, we are, you know, a physical body and underlying this physical body is our energy body. Now, the energy body has constant energy in flow, and it's constantly restoring energy and balance to our physical body. Disease and illness recurs where there is a block in the energy body. So first there's a block, and then the cells and the organs start to malfunction, which is dis-ease. Okay, I'm putting an emphasis on dis-ease. Your body is, is naturally, you know, knows how to heal itself. And so problems can occur when, for instance, a baby is born with congenital abnormalities, when our emotions and our experiences aren't cleared from the body. So we need to learn how to, you know, release trapped emotions from our body. And this is not a hard thing to do. You do not need to be a trained, you know, kinesiologist or a trained energy worker to do this. Um, maybe I can do another class on that separately, but this is a very, I think it's just my wish one day that the, these things are taught in schools to help us emotionally regulate. Um, another way that problems can occur is when toxins are placed in the body and this plays a big role in the environment that you're in. So the foods you're exposed to, the cleaning products, the beauty products that you're exposed to, and then injury or trauma, which is often, it gives us that immediate response. Often the, with the emotions and the, the toxins, there's a delayed um, response because the body is like trying to do its best to clear the emotions but um, and, and the toxins, but there's a delayed effect because the body is working really hard to restore that balance. And so because the body is wired to heal itself, um, clearing by clearing blocks, we can augment our body's ability to heal. And the thing to note here is that when you're experiencing pain, it's your body is sending you a signal that there is blocked energy in that area and too much energy is constricted. And so we need to be really mindful that we are constantly, um, you know, using the, the tools that, that either you know already or that I'm going to teach you tonight in order to help you, you know, keep that movement going. It's like saying, you know, oh, I cleaned my house once and that's it, right? And you've been living here for three years. It's like, I'm sure after three years or even after a month or a week that you're going to need to do, you know, a, a, a good, you know, tidy through. So it's really important that your body is constantly receiving that, that love and, and energy that you're giving it. Now, the big, you know, elephant in the room, stress. So what I want you to do now is on a scale of one to 10, you can either do this just generally, or you can think of a specific problem or an issue that you have. And I want you to name a number from one to 10. How stressed are you about the situation? I'll just give you a moment. Now, when we're in a state of stress, our emotions heighten and our breathing changes. And what happens is we go, our breathing is slow and shallow. We go into state of flight or fight. And believe it or not, even your body language, your posture, your the way that you use your the muscles in your face, it's going to show the stress. You can't hide stress. You can fake it, but you can't hide it. And this, what I want you to do is at the center of your chest, I want you to take your fingers. So take your two hands. I'm going to try and do this so that you can see. And just like almost like in your cleavage area, take your two, so two hands and get your fingers. And I want you to make circles with both hands. Press firmly down. Make sure that there's enough, enough pressure there. And I want you to breathe in and out through the nose.
Now, ideally you wanna do this for about 30 seconds to a minute. It'd be even better if you did it for two minutes. But hold down, keep the pressure and make sure you're breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now, what you are doing is you are essentially tapping on the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve connects us from the brainstem all the way down to our uh, sacral area. And this connects to all the other organs, the vital organs. You can obviously, you know, it's, it's the, the rib, the, the ribs protect the heart and the lungs. And then beyond that, it's connected to a lot of the gut receptors in the body. And so what you are doing is you are sending a signal to your brain that you are in charge, that nothing is harming you right now. So if this is a really good exercise to do, if let's just say, for example, you see a distressing video online or something external has, has triggered you, you know, it be a family problem, a work problem, whatever it may be. I used to do this exercise. I'd, you know, either sit at my desk or when I was, you know, working, I would go to the bathroom and just sit and just do this, you know, and, and tap down firmly. And it would really, really help me. Okay. It takes 30 seconds to a minute. You can do it sitting in the car. It's a really great exercise. Do it for a few more moments. Okay. When you're ready, I now want you to take a moment to acknowledge how you feel. So on a scale of one to 10, thinking back to that same issue or that problem that you, we thought about before, has that number changed? If you're watching the replay, I'm going to expect a message from you to let me know what happened. So when you clear stress from your body, you create a healing response in the body. And chronic stress creates physiological problems. And so I'm going to encourage you to do this a few times a day. If you feel that this exercise or this tool wasn't right for you, there's another one. Um, I personally wouldn't do this in public, but um, it's more, it, it's, it's a weird one, but it really works as well. Get your index finger on the inside of your ear and you just press into the middle part. If your ear hurts, if it hurts, if it not hurts, if it feels a little bit tender, then that's an indication that there is stress in your body. And this, doing this for, again, 30 seconds to a minute can help regulate your nervous system. So that's another tool that you can try. So these are all some great little strategies that you can um, try and they don't take much out of you and they're really, really powerful and effective. Okay. Another one is qi gong. Now the word qi means energy and then the gong means work. So what we are doing is we are doing some energy work here. And this is an ancient like traditional Chinese medicine practice that has helped people for thousands of years. Like it just blows my mind that like, you know, Western medicine is trying to push this down when it's like, you cannot take this away from us. And what I'm going to teach you now is basically to, I'm going to teach you how to use our energy to cultivate self-compassion and loving kindness. And, you know, I, I'm going to go a bit off topic now, but like when I thought about this class, it's like, okay, let's, let's send some healing energy to, to those afflicted by the war. And I'm like, it's not going to come from an authentic place or from a, an aligned place of balance if we ourselves are not balanced, okay, I cannot give from an empty cup. And so I guess, you know, I'm here to help you, you know, clear yourself, balance yourself out so that then you are able to then help others. Okay. I hope you understand um, my reasoning behind this and there's a higher force at play here. And so qi, qi gong is used for self-healing first and foremost. And it's one of the key practices to be able to project energy from your hands for body workers and healers. And I'm going to emphasize your body is the greatest tool that you have you could ever have. Okay. No amount of money you spend, no amount of training and courses and knowledge that you learn is going to replace what you already have within you. So First, we heal ourselves through a connected, powerful routine that activates the body's own healing power. And you're really going to love this exercise. If you've never done this before, um, it's going to, to blow your mind. 
So with this enlivened, vibrant energy, we're going to learn how to project the energy out of our hands and into somebody else. And you can do this for yourself. You can do this on your partner. You can do this on your dogs, on your cats. I do this with my rabbits. You can even do this to your grandmother who's on the other side of the world, okay? I'm going to set the intention at the end of the class that you do this tonight for those affected by the war, okay? But only after you do this on yourself first. So what this is called, it's called a Buddha pump. And we're going to try this on ourselves. And we're going to basically open up our arms with the spinal cord breathing. Now I'm going to stand up. And what you're going to do is with your arms, you're going to, um, you know, stretch out. And then you're going to go in, inwards. And as you inhale, you open up the chest. And then as you exhale, I'm going to stand sideways. You round out the back, almost like a, a cat pose, and you come in. So we're breathing in to open up the chest and then exhale. And what we're doing is we are opening or loosening up the spine. And the spine becomes a column of energy that sends and directs energy through the whole body. So I want you to do this with me now. Take a deep breath, open the chest, and then exhale and round out your back. And as you round out your back, your elbows, they come together. And your chin comes to your chest. And you're moving all the joints in your spine. And you're synchronizing your breath with the movement. Now, you need to relax your hands down. Now, you want to take your palms next and face up and just shake your wrist. So we're going to open up the energy pathways that get to the hands and shake the wrists. Now, don't laugh at me, but sometimes this is called Italian Qigong <laughs> or a Wog Qigong, you know, the, you know, the movement. So when you're shaking the wrist, you're actually activating the heart meridian that connects down. And that's actually why we wear our wedding rings on our left hand. And we're opening up the energy through the wrists and the hands. And as you're doing this, take a deep breath through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. Do that again. Okay. Now I want you to slow it down. And as you slow it down, I want you to notice the energy in your hands. You want to get a nice buzzing, tingling energy in the hands. Do you feel it down your, your arms? I want you to breathe into it and feel the elbows to the fingertips ignited with energy. You should be feeling something. Now, to tap into the source energy, we're going to connect into the earth. The earth is one of the forces that is larger than us that's connected to your own personal energy. Where you are without connection to the earth energy, you, can, you cannot be. And that's why I said before, our, our connection through our phones and technology is causing a disconnection. So your personal energy is an extension from the earth energy. And so we're going to tap into that. And believe it or not, you don't even need to be outside for this. You can do this in your home. So. What we want to do now is I want you to shift your weight into your heels. So I'm standing up. You want to relax your tailbone. And just for a moment, feel the earth energy, which is gravity, just underneath your hands. Just really want you to connect with that. So we are constantly in relationship with the earth through gravity. And what we want to do is we want to let our bodies line up with that gravitational pole so that the earth energy and the gravity charges us up rather than depletes us. So this is an amazing exercise to do when you're feeling low energy. And this is a skillful use of your energy. So what we're doing is our palms are face down. Now, if you just go up and down, just up and down, you can probably feel the earth energy in your hands. I want you to go down 
and then very slow, like go down almost to like your pubic region and then come up. And you can feel that earth energy in your hands. And it often feels like a current, like this slight magnetic feeling. Now put your mind in your palms focus. Just focus on your hands. Concentrate and feel. The slower that you go, the more you'll feel it. Now, the Buddha palm creates an alignment between your personal energy and the energy around you and in the earth, for example. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to move the body like an antenna into different positions to allow the chi channel to move through us for healing. So I want you to take your hand and I want you to pl place your left hand almost at your sacral area like just above like your hips, your pubic region. And then I want you to take your left hand and place it on top. So your hands should look like this. And I want you to feel the energy in your hands, almost as if you've got like an imaginary ball in between your hands and you're squishing the ball back and forth. And then I want you to take your right hand and take it all the way up to your forehead. And you'll see here that my hand, uh, 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 my thumb and my index finger are open like this. And this is actually called a tiger's jaw. Now, this is the energy of our body, the belly center and the energy of the mind. And we're going to create a connection between the energy of the mind and the body. So I want you to take a deep breath here. And I'm still feeling and putting my energy in the space between my two hands. And then I'm imagining that I'm connecting the belly and the head for the purposes of the mind-body connection. Now, what I want you to do next is I want you to take your hand that's at your forehead and I want you to move it down to your throat center. And just where the head was, where communication happens, down here is where clear communication happens between the mind and the throat center. Often we can have experiences in our life where we can feel blocked because certain things have, have triggered us and activated us or certain scenarios and situations, and we can feel a block in our throat and we lose our voice, metaphorically speaking. And so it's really important that we step into our voice. Now feel the connection between the throat center. Take a deep breath. And then I want you to come down to your heart center. The throat center and the heart center is where we have communication between our emotions and our speech. Each one of these points is a point on the microcosmic orbit and it's a very powerful energetic circulation in the Qigong system. And you've probably noticed that each one of these points connects to a different chakra. Now, next, I want you to come down to your solar plexus, which is just under your breast area and just above your navel. And the sequence in our hands is creating a healing effect in those um, chakra centers, those energy centers, because we are directing energy there. And believe it or not, your hands are actually now charged with energy. The closer your hands come together, the closer, the, the, the more energy that you're going to feel. Now, what I want you to do next, so you've done your mind, your throat your, your, and your heart and your solar plexus. I now want you to hold up your hands together and do a little ball with your hands. Can you start to feel the energy move through your hands? Do you feel that tingly sensation? Move your hands closer together. 
And do you feel that almost like an electrical magnetic current in your hands? Your hands now are even more powerful in sending out healing energy. Now, wherever you need a little extra healing, your hands are now charged up. So for instance, if you're feeling tension in your neck and shoulders, then just place your hands there. You don't even need to massage yourself, but you will get the effect. If you're feeling tension in your knees, um, in your, your tummy area, in your head, wherever it may be, it's actually emotional stress that's causing physiological stress. Lower back pain is of, uh, a common one as well. Just place your hands there and utilize the energy for your self-healing. Okay. You just did the Buddha palm healing. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. And you can go back and, and rewatch this to, to, to learn the steps. That It's not something that I want you to be, you know, fastidious with the steps and I got it wrong. This is just about play, have fun with it, be light with it. You're going to get more out of this when you approach it um, that way. So I want you tonight to set an intention because now yourself, you have hopefully cleared your own vessel. I want you in bed tonight to do the same thing, um, setting the intention for those afflicted by the wall. We're, we're doing a group heart, almost like a group heart healing meditation and our collective energy, like do not underestimate how far and wide your energy can be received by others. Okay. When you set the intention for their highest and greatest good, it will be received. So I really hope you enjoyed that Qigong exercise. I'd, I'd love some feedback and I'd love to know um, what you thought of it. Okay. I've got a question for you now. <laughs> this is, I think it's our last one. So do you even breathe? Are you breathing? Are you consciously breathing? As I said before, your body is the only lab that you need. Your body is the only thing that you need to help um, activate what is innately within you, the powers within you. So as I said before, your nervous system is probably, you know, under threat, it's probably under attack. And so it's important to note that your nervous system is divided into two parts. So the first one, number one, the central nervous system is used for voluntary movements. And this correlates to your conscious awareness. So for instance, my nervous system says, pick up pen. So I pick up the pen and I'm now able to write with it. Um, some Someone takes a swing at me. I'm going to, you know, re have a reflex or there's rain and I don't want to get my hair wet. So I'm naturally going to put my hands up to protect my precious hair. That's all the voluntary movements. The second part to our nervous system is the autonomic nervous system which automatically regulates the body functions and things like your heartbeat your nervous system your sorry your digestion um and you know your heartbeat i said that and these are all different things that are automatically happening with your body and your breathing is one of those examples you don't have to think about it it just happens and there is only one bridge between the nervous system and the autonomic nervous system and that one bridge between the conscious awareness and the subconscious awareness is your breath, which is inhaled and exhaled through your twin lungs. So even the fact that we have twin lungs, I hope, hopefully it's like you're starting to see the metaphor between the twin um, nervous system, system like yeah, the, the structures that we have in built in our body. So the majority of your breathing belongs to the autonomic nervous system, just like your pulse. And that means most of the oxygen is actually summoned by your subconscious awareness. So when you feel safe and relaxed and you're in the comfort of your own home and there are no threats approaching you, you breathe more deeply. When you're threatened or anxious, your breath becomes rapid and shallow and you don't think about any of this. Unlike your heartbeat, you can choose to make your breathing a big part of your conscious awareness at any time. And this is the open bridge that you have between the two levels of awareness. Now, conscious breathing is something that has to be learned unless we were raised by yogis 
it's not something that is happening in our lives, unfortunately, because unconscious breathing rarely empties out the lungs completely. And this is a really important note that I want to make. And once you learn this, you cannot unlearn it. And it's now going to be in the forefront of your mind. And so my like, hope is that you walk away from this class having learned how to breathe, for goodness sakes. So you want to focus on the exhale as much as the inhale breathing. And you want to feel your abdomen rise and your chest expand. The best way to describe this, it's going to sound silly, but it's going to help you remember it, is instead of breathing north to south, so up and down, I want you to breathe east to west, okay? It's a, it's a really good one to remember because we want to actually see the visual and feel the visual of our chest expand and our belly expand. And you hold for just a moment in between the exhale and then you let out all the air completely. Breathing slowly and deeply isn't natural to us as Westerners because our lifestyle is not breath conscious. I mean, I wish we learned this at school. I really do. And just think how many children in our world today, whether they be primary, high school, or even university students and adults for that matter, could really benefit from some of these breathing exercises. So when you grow up, you learn that holding your breath is a great way to double your senses. Whenever you become overwhelmed or frightened, you just sipped your breath and held it. Long before you knew anything about alcohol or drugs to number pain, you were actually doing this from a very young age. You knew that holding your breath meant numbing your pain. And so what happened was possibly in school, you stopped breathing because you were in confinement or you were bored. And your mind wanders as your breath weakens you stop breathing deeply when you're tranced out on screens. And sitting in front of TVs and computers and on your phone all day does not promote deep breathing. So abdominal breathing from like this is deep breathing from the lower abdomen activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is a part of the autonomic nervous system that invites the state of healing and flow. And what this means is that you can't heal anything in your body unless you are in a parasympathetic nervous system. And I'm going to make a side note here. No amount of drugs can penetrate the parasympathetic nervous system. So this decreases your heart rate and it relaxes your breathing patterns. And it also changes during, during different emotional states that we experience. So for example, when you're angry, your breath becomes really chaotic and you start panting during a depressive state. And that's why, you know, the brown paper bag, breathe into the bag. That's a, a helpful tool. Your breath becomes sluggish if you're anxious and you can experience rapid and shallow breathing as well. Now, every emotion has a unique pattern of breathing attached to it. And I want you to think about how differently you breathe when you are crying hysterically, when you felt joy on the last day of school, right? Think about the difference between the two. You've just finished school or you're about to go on a holiday versus you're crying hysterically because something has happened and, and you're triggered by it. And then think of another example. You're fuming with rage. Someone has just done the worst thing to you and you're in a state of rage. What is your breathing like? All the waters of emotion can become expressed in the breath of air. And if you let emotions overtake you like rage, loss, or grief, then you're losing control of your breath. And you become, therefore, unconscious. And most bouts of rage, hysteria, and panic are a type of sleepwalking, believe it or not, uh, because you're in a state of unconsciousness or unconscious. Now, learning to breathe properly traverses the bridge between the darkness and the light within. And it gives you a chance to process your emotions and memories and to heal your body. To, and remember when I said that we rarely exhale when we are breathing unconsciously? Well, that also equates to not releasing everything that's in your body unconsciously. And then this is where we get ourselves into that loop of holding on to trapped emotions and storing them in the body, which then causes physiological problems. Now, not exhaling fully creates the condition of repressed emotions. 
not everybody is ready to dive into this. So the fact that you're here tonight, I applaud you um, for that because you're obviously in a state where you realized, maybe you've realized I can't continue the way I am, or you, you've come to that realization or that awareness that something needs to change. And so well done. And um, you know, I, I really applaud you for that. Now, here's the exercise. Slowing down your breathing produces dramatic changes in the body and the mind. And you can actually count this for yourself, but the average person breathes approximately 15 times per minute. Now, you and I both know that that is nowhere near enough. We need, to, it's, um, sorry, it's the opposite. We're, we're not breathing enough. And so we're not breathing properly because the inhale is not the same length as the exhale. And so I suggest you measure this for yourself, how often you do breathe in a minute. And what we want to do is we want to slow down our breath to eight in a minute. That's the goal. And according to Tantra, when you are able to drink in uh, prana life force, it actually feeds your pituitary gland and allows it to function op op optimally. And this regulates all the other glands in the body to ensure the proper balance of hormones, which is your key to radiant health. And it requires this kind of cool, calming, pranic breath to accomplish its work effectively. Now, no wonder everyone feels so bad when they don't know how to read. You know, you're made, you're made to feel bad at school. You don't know how to read. You don't know how to do your times tables. Um, but we're not made to feel bad about not learning how to breathe when really it's the most important thing. Now, the thing I want to emphasize is that we can live a few weeks without food. We can live a few days without water, but you literally cannot live minutes without your breath, okay? Your oxygen is the elixir to life. And it is so important that we retrain ourselves how to breathe. And so what we're going to do now is a simple breathing exercise where it's four, three, and seven. So we're going to breathe into the count of four. We're going to hold for three seconds. And then we're going to breathe out to the count of seven. Okay, are you ready? One. Hold, three, and now breathe out to the count of seven. Okay, do that again. Breathe into the count of four. Hold. Breathe out to the count of seven. One more time. Breathe into the count of four. Hold. Breathe out. Obviously, I want you to do this for a longer period of time. So you can do this in bed, do it just before you have breakfast tomorrow, do it when you're in, don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> Please do not hold your breath while you're driving. I don't want insurance knocking on my door, but you obviously in, in this state, you are really activating your nervous system and you automatically, the world can literally be falling apart the moment you come back to your breath you're actually sending signals to your mind, to your brain that you are okay, that there are no threats around you. And this you know, enhances your, your, obviously your breathing, but it releases stagnant emotions and stagnant energy in the body. It improves your immunity. It improves your um, blood pressure. And your even your digestion gets a, a hit here because when you breathe, directly into your belly. Remember what I said about north to south breathing versus east to west. You're actually improving the digestion. The, the intestines start to actually work a whole lot better. So I really hope that you don't just do this tonight, but you make this a big part of your, your routine and your daily life. And teach this to your kids. Teach this to your, 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 your colleagues, your partners, your, your parents. Do this. Make this normal. Make breathing normal. <laughs> can't believe I have to say that, but it's really, once you, you realize you're not breathing properly, it really does make a huge difference. Okay, we've now come to the end of our class and I genuinely am, am so grateful that you're here. 
Now, love is the driving force of transformation. I really hope that you've taken away so much um, knowledge from this class, but more importantly, being able to, to, I guess, utilize your own wisdom here and, you know, maybe needing to make some changes about how, how you show up in the world and how you're engaging, responding and reacting to others. I really want you, I'm going to remind you to use the Buddha palm tonight at your first available opportunity and send it to those affected by the war. It's just a constant heartbreak and it feels like the, it's just never going to end. And it, although it may feel like that, just remember what I said, that the season of winter cannot go on forever. It, every war has to, has to come to an end. Every heartbreak will, will mend. Every, you know, we're, we're here to transmute energy. We're not here to stay in the thick of it. I'm not going to feed your victim. I'm going to empower you. And I really hope you took a lot out of tonight's class. I would love to hear about some of the changes that you're, you're making and some of the um, implements that you're applying in your life. And I really thank you so much for being here. All my love. Mwah.